It isn't easy trying to find a terrorist or a drug baron. And it's not that there isn't enough information out there about them. It's that there's too much information out there. There's reports coming from everywhere. There are volunteer reports and foreign service reports. There's intel that comes in from the CIA and the FBI and the DOD. Everybody has something to say about terrorists, about drug dealers, drug smugglers, human smugglers, every bad guy you can imagine. If anything, it's hard to find the piece of information that matters amidst all the noise. That's what makes it so difficult to find the bad guy. Bad guys don't hide better than anybody else. It's just that everybody's talking about them. And how do you find the one piece of information that you need to find, arrest, neutralize, or dispose of that bad guy? That's the hard part. In the early 2000s, an especially bad guy by the name of Imad Magnaya had made his way to the top of the FBI's most wanted list. Now, Magnaya was a Hezbollah general, the number two most senior ranking person in Hezbollah. And at the time, he was known for ruthless, terrible things. He had made public claims that he was going to spend his life hunting and killing Israeli and U.S. operatives around the globe. And by all understanding, he was fulfilling his promise. He had bombed the Israeli embassy in Buenos Aires. He had bombed the U.S. embassy in Beirut. He had kidnapped military and CIA operatives, tortured them, and killed them. From 19... 84 through the mid-1990s, Magnaio was the mastermind behind some of the most treacherous bombings, kidnappings, hijackings that you can imagine. He was a bad guy, and everybody was looking for him, especially CIA, and especially Israel, Israel's Mossad. And no matter how hard we looked, nobody could find him. He was so difficult to find, to capture, to pinpoint, that he actually earned the nickname, the Father of Smoke. Magnaya could go almost anywhere he wished, and people couldn't find him because there was too much noise about him. The one key piece of information that people needed couldn't be found because they were inundated with overwhelming amounts of reporting that had nothing or little to do with Magnaya or where he was. That was the challenge of the day. That was the intelligence blunder that kept us from capturing him earlier in his career. Now, how many of us can relate to that, that idea of being overwhelmed with information, inundated to the point where the one thing that we're looking for, that key piece that we need, is constantly out of reach, irritatingly out of reach? We have it happen to us all the time. And the one area that I want to discuss today where it absolutely breaks my heart more than any other is in the area of feedback and advice. Everybody wants feedback. Anybody who's trying to accomplish something, who's trying to grow, who's trying to build something, wants feedback. They want to know how they're doing. They want to know if people like what they're building, what could be better, what could be worse, what's distracting, what's improved, what improvement opportunities exist. We all want feedback. But what happens is we are inundated with advice. Oh, and advice is worthless. It's terrible. It's noise. And what happens over time is as we seek feedback and as we get advice, we just stop listening. We just shut down. We shut down our ears to all of it. And we just plow straight forward with whatever we think is right, whatever we want to do. Or even worse, we quit and we stop trying altogether because we feel like nobody cares enough to give us feedback, so what we do must not matter. Everybody has advice and let's face it, most advice basically amounts to Quit while you're ahead. It's never going to work. If it was going to work, somebody else would have done it. Stop wasting your time. Right? 
That's the advice that we are all so accustomed to translating from parents and teachers, from principals and employers, from peers. And that's noise. That is a distraction that keeps us from finding that one nugget of information, that one key opportunity that could result in a successful change, in an operation of epic proportions. It happened with Magnaya, where international intelligence agencies around the world couldn't find him because of the noise. Is it really so disappointing when it happens to us too? But how do you decipher all the noise? How do you make it so that you don't just shut down and stop listening? I think that the key lies with understanding when you're hearing advice and when you're hearing feedback. You see, when the intelligence agencies couldn't find Magnaya, they didn't have a choice to just stop listening. They couldn't simply shut down all of the networks out there and stop taking in reports. They couldn't stop talking to each other. All that noise and garbage coming in, they had to find something to do with it. They had to sort through it. They had to categorize it. And the same is true for us. If we are trying to build something, if we are trying to grow, to go somewhere, to make some change, we cannot let ourselves just shut down. We have to stay open. But we have to filter through what we're hearing. And the reason that the responsibility is on us to filter is because we're the ones that know what we're listening for. We know what that piece of feedback is that will change our trajectory. We may not know it in our heart, but we'll know it when we hear it. We just have to let ourselves hear it. Feedback never starts with the, with the word you. When you're listening to someone talk and they say you, that's not feedback. That's a big red flag that they're about to give you advice. You should do this. You could do that. You didn't make me feel this way. You can't do something else. That's all advice, and advice is worthless. Advice is noise. If we find ourselves starting sentences with the word you, guess what you're giving? You're giving advice. You're not building anything. You're tearing someone down. So drop the word you, and if someone is talking to you with that word, don't listen because you're not gonna get anything out of it. You're gonna get what their fears and their concerns and their thoughts are, but nothing that's of viable interest to you. You're not gonna get any intel from a conversation where someone starts with the word you. Feedback starts with the word I. I felt, I heard, I thought, I saw. That is feedback because now you know that the person speaking to you is telling you what their perception was. That's where feedback starts. Feedback starts in something that is objective, something that involves the five senses, something that is factual from one person's point of view. That is feedback. When I heard you say, you love me, it made me feel good. That's feedback. When I saw how you darkened the music in the middle of your film, that made me feel scared. That's feedback, that's important stuff. When you gave me a deal on that sale, that's feedback. When you brought me my own meal, that's feedback. That's the kind of stuff that is worth its weight in gold because you know that if it touches one person's heart or mind, it's going to touch somebody else's heart and mind also. So listen. Listen when people start with the word I, and listen for when they give you those objective pieces of information, things that are based in the five senses, things that are based in the here and the now. Advice is not objective. Advice is subjective. That means, objective, that means advice is something people think is right, not something they sensed, not something they witnessed, not something they observed. Just something they opined is important. You should never start a sentence with the word you. That is advice. You should never wear brown shoes with black shirt. That's advice. 
Advice always starts with the word you. Advice very rarely helps. You shouldn't try this at home. You shouldn't go out with that girl. You shouldn't get that degree. You should study engineering instead of music. All of that is advice, and advice doesn't bring us any closer to our end goal. Because advice is someone's opinion, not, in the, not based on fact, not based on anything observable. It's not here, and it's not now. Advice is not actionable. Feedback is actionable. If you can learn to filter feedback from advice, you can take on all the noise. You can listen to and experience all the inputs that people have around you. You can take on the information, and then you can splice through it. And you can decide what goes in the garbage, and you can decide what stays on the table. Because the only way that we are going to be able to grow, the only way we're going to succeed, is if we give ourselves the opportunity to hear the feedback and act on that feedback. But we also have to give ourselves the space to hear that advice and choose to ignore it. Because there's power in choosing which information is of value and which information is worthless. Let's go back to Magnaya. Let's go back to early 2004. CIA had failed to capture him. FBI had failed to capture him. Mossad had failed to capture him. The Saudis had failed. Allies around the globe could not track this guy down. They couldn't capture him. He could flow between borders. He could fly on private jets. He could do anything he wanted to do, and people couldn't nail him down. It was frustrating. It was dumbfounding. It was humiliating. But we kept trying. And from all those reports, we realized that what needed to happen was a filtering process that spanned across multiple groups. We needed to work together. So Israeli, Israeli Mossad and CIA decided to partner together on an operation to take out Magnaya. You see, Israel and Mossad have special skills, special allowances, things that they can legally do that CIA and America, we can't do those things. But Americans have special access that Israeli Mossad agents just don't have. Because when you're from Israel, there are some countries in the world that will shoot you on sight. But when you're from the United States, you can cross more or less any border you want. You may not be liked, but you're unlikely to be targeted. So the two teams, the two groups, partner together to make an operation to filter through the information and find something actionable, something that we can do to take out Imad Magnaya. And we found that thing in 2006. We found out where he was living. CIA found out that he was living in Damascus, in an apartment somewhere in the center of town. And they were able to profile him and see where he was going to, where he was coming from, who he was meeting, who he was working with, tap into his communications. By finding out what Magnaya was doing, by finding out where he was living, we were able to filter out some of the noise and focus on some of the fact. Now, the Israelis had lots of information on Hezbollah. Makes sense, because Hezbollah's mission is essentially to eradicate the Israeli nation. So with their information that they had already parsed through, that they had already filtered, paired up with our information, an operation could be born, an actionable operation that could have real impact. But it doesn't happen overnight. Just like with feedback, it takes years years of gaining feedback, reflecting on that feedback, and changing what you're doing before you can actually change your trajectory. And that's what happened. From 2006 to 2008, Israel and CIA built a joint operation absolutely in secret to take out Imad Magnaya. And then in 2008, the day came where the operation was put in motion. Magnaya was where he was supposed to be. Israeli operatives and American operatives were where they were supposed to be. And when everything lined up, the Israelis triggered a car bomb from outside of the country's borders. And a single signal across cellular networks exploded a custom-built car bomb 
and eradicated Imad Magnaya. It was absolute success on Israeli and American sides. The agents that were involved in that operation disappeared into the smoke. Hezbollah was up in arms and they were accusing and pointing fingers at everybody they could to try to lay blame, but nobody knew who had done it. Nobody was taking credit for it. In fact, it wasn't until 2014 when CIA and Israel announced publicly that they had worked together in 2008 to kill Imad Magnaya. They had worked together to filter through the noise to find the few pieces of information, those nuggets of wisdom that allowed them to craft an operation that over the course of two years eradicated a bad guy, met their objective, and changed the world. You're on a mission. You have your objectives. And everybody has an opinion. But you don't have to listen to those opinions. All you have to do is learn how to filter through the noise so that people can talk and let them talk. Everybody is giving away free information. Let them give it away. But you choose which pieces are feedback, which pieces will help you along your way. And you choose which pieces are advice, worthless pieces that belong on the floor. When you find that actionable piece of information, when you find that nugget of truth that allows you to execute exactly what you're trying to accomplish, at that moment, you have won. And that is everyday espionage. Thank you for listening to the Everyday Espionage Podcast. Remember to review and subscribe to our podcast on your favorite platform. And if you took something away from today's conversation, find a friend and share the message.